page 52, arpeggio and pedal studies. Oh goody, now they're introducing the damper pedal or the sustaining pedal. At the top of the page, they're pointing out the symbol this book is using for the pedal. You know, different music uses different pedal symbols as to when to pedal and whatever. When tells you when to put it down and when to lift it up. This book is using the, probably the most common is the line. When the line goes down, you push the pedal down. As long as the line's going across, you keep the pedal down. And when the line goes up, you lift the pedal up. The problem is, the lines that go down and up are not placed accurately. It's up to the teacher to explain what's going on with the pedal. Okay, fine, I'll take care of it. They also give a picture of the three pedals. Now, not all pianos have three pedals. Uh, if your piano only has two pedals, the middle pedal is missing. Okay? But most pianos will have the left and right pedals, at least. Now, we're dealing with the right pedal, the one that's called, in the book, it's called a damper pedal. It's labeled damper pedal. Uh, it works the dampers. The dampers are those felt things that rest on the strings or up against the strings. And when you, when you play a key, they automatically get away from the string so it can ring, and then when you lift the key up, they push against the key to stop it or dampen it. An arpeggio is simply a broken chord. You take a chord and you, instead of playing all the notes at once, you play them one at a time. It's an arpeggio. You can have all kinds of arpeggios. Uh, Depending on when you're watching this video, I may or may not have those vi arpeggio videos up yet. If I do, then you can go look at the arpeggios for the key of C major and do the beginner stuff in it. Arpeggios are important, very important. They're like scales, they're important. If you want to know why they're important, go watch the introductory video on scales and arpeggios. Now, if on page 52, Oh, they're also introducing diminuendo and crescendo, the, the long arrows. I thought we already had long arrows. We have the little short arrow, that's the accent, that over individual note, okay? This stretches multiple notes. It could be any number of multiple notes, who cares? And I read these arrows the same way I read the music, from left to right. So if the arrow starts at a point, and as I'm going across, the lines get further apart, I get louder. If the arrow starts with the lines apart, and as I read it, they get closer and closer to a point, I get softer. And that's how I remember which I'm doing, okay, in this one. So in this arpeggio study, they want you to get louder as you go up, and they want you to get softer as you go down, is basically all they're doing. Now, in this piece, the hands are going to move around some, and you're going to have to look at the keyboard to do it. You could actually just memorize this. It's a, it's a one chord. And you look at, okay, where do I start the arpeggio and where do I end it? Well, you're going to start the arpeggio at this C. It's two octaves below middle C. And you're going to end it at this C. It's two octaves above middle C. And you're going to do an arpeggio between the two Cs just like they're saying to do it there. And to demonstrate that, sort of, is this. I put it in C position, starting, because that's where I'm starting out. And I do the first measure. Then I do the second measure. And as I do the second measure, I move the left hand over to the C position above it. Because I want it there before I need to play the note. That's what's important. So if it, as I'm doing the right hand, I move the left hand over. Now as I'm playing these chord, these notes, I'm going to move the right hand over to this C position because that's where it needs to be. It's here. So it's there when I need it. Okay, and then as I play those notes, I'm moving the left hand up to get the high C. The LH and RH, left hand, right hand, so they want the left hand to play the high C and then the right hand starts all coming down. So as I'm here and as I play the right hand notes, and coming down is the same way going the other direction. It's got to be rhythmically even. So you're moving the hands ahead of time of when you need it and you always go over. When you go to play that high C, 
They're saying third finger on it. That's a suggestion, all right? It's not, if you use some other finger, it's incorrect, all right? I tend to use second finger. You can use third finger. I use whatever finger it happens to be handy. Usually you're not going to use the thumb because it's short and you have to reach further to get the thumb to do it. You're not going to use the little finger because you have to cross over more to get the little finger to, to on that key. So you're going to use second or third finger. It's up to you, whichever. So it's probably best in my opinion. And this one, just, just memorize this real quick so you can look at the keyboard. you got to see what you're doing. If you're an advanced player, I'd say you can read the music and you still probably don't need to look at the keyboard because you're so familiar with the keys are by now, the advanced students, that you can do it that way. In addition to all that mess, they want you to push the pedal down at the beginning of this. You see the pedal indication line? It goes down right at the beginning and it stays down through the whole thing, both lines, and it comes up at the end. I want to get picky about it. I mean, you can study pedal, pedaling the rest of your life. It's, it's, it's quite an art form. It's not to be taken lightly. Only pedal when you absolutely have to, all right? Or in a method book, when they're telling you to. <laughs> some method books will tell you, and some teachers will tell you, to push the pedal down with the note at the same time. And that is a style. That, that's fine. I'm going to tell you, and a lot of teachers will tell you, it's another technique in pedaling, is you push the note down first, and then the pedal. Okay, I like to give the note a chance to start ringing first, before I lift the dampers up. What the dampers do is they let all the strings vibrate, and so the overtones go crazy. So it changes the tone. If I play the note by itself without the pedal, with the pedal, it sounds different on an acoustic piano it does. I don't really know about an electronic piano. There is a technique, if you have a really loud chord or something, like at the end of a piece, it boom, then the idea is actually push the pedal down right before you play the note get the dampers off the strings and then play the note so you get that reinforcement right from the beginning. We don't want that here. Okay, we want the note first and then the, and then the pedal. So I recommend you do that. At the end of the piece, you played the last note and it's three counts long, right? One, the pedal's down. One, two, three. You lift the, f the finger up and the pedal up at the same time, all right? So it, it's one, two, three, off. Now, you're saying, but why? I mean, it's done. Why can't I take my hand down and just let the pedal do it? And I say, because it's a bad habit, it looks bad, it's poor technique, don't. Leave the hand on there. Now, sometimes, for showy reasons or whatever, you'll lift the hand up, da -da, boom, day. And leave the pedal down to keep the sound going, but very seldom that's a special presentation type effect to give. Normally, leave leave it down. Don't get fancy, especially not yet. This is a three four time. Let's try it out together. I'm not going to do the crescendo and decrescendo. You can do that on your own. Okay, you're going from a medium soft to a loud, and then back down. They don't tell you how soft to get. Okay. Uh, you would think probably back down to a medium soft, but you could get softer than that if you wanted to. All right, I'll give you three counts. Now let's play it together. So we're gonna start out down here in C position, and the foot's on the pedal. Here we go. Mm -hmm, yeah. One, ready, go.